So let's sketch this graph. Well, the first thing I like to look at is to figure out what my end behavior is going to be. Since it's to an odd exponent and I have a positive coefficient, I know that my end behavior is going to go down to the left and up to the right. Next, I want to figure out where it crosses the x-axis. So that means I need to factor this. Since I have four terms, I'm going to use the grouping method. So I look at the first two and I say, well, what's in common with those two? 5x squared. So I'm going to take out a 5x squared. So that leaves me with x minus 2. I know that's right because when I distribute this through, I should end up back at my original. So 5x squared times x is 5x to the third, and 5x squared times negative 2 is negative 10x squared. Now I look at my next two. Well, a big tip is right here. I'm going to be taking out a negative, and 20 goes into both of them. So I'm going to take out a negative 20. That will leave me with x minus 2. Once again, I can check this because negative 20 times x is negative 20x, and negative 20 times negative 2 is positive 40. Another really great thing is that these match up. If they didn't match up, I know I did something wrong. So I'm going to factor that out. I'm going to have x minus 2 times 5x squared minus 20. Now at this point, some of you probably said, well, Catherine, why don't you just take 5 out of all of them? Well, how many times do you remember to do that? I hardly remember. So when I look at this one, I notice that I can take a 5 out of the 5x squared and the 20. So let's do that next. If you forget, you can always make it up. So I'm going to take out a 5, and I end up with x squared minus 4. Remember, when I distribute, I need to get back to my original. Well, x squared minus 4 also factors. So I'm going to have x minus 2 times 5 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Now when I simplify this, it actually means 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 squared. And when we equal that to 0, this tells me where my x-intercepts are. My x-intercepts are going to be at negative 2 and 2. So let's graph that. I'm going to call this negative 2. And I'm going to call this guy O2. Well, I know my end behaviors. It's going to go down to the left and up to the right. Now that's kind of weird. How do I get this to make it go up and down? Well, an interesting thing is, is this guy right here. This is called a double root. You might have heard it, of it called as multiplicity 2. That means it just touches at x equals 2. So I know that it's going to look like this. Go down and then up. Sometimes you'll hear the term bounces off of 2. So that's how I created this one. Let's look at the next one. So let's see how this works on the calculator. I already went in and put um, 5x to the third minus 10x squared minus 20x plus 40 on the calculator. And then I went into Zoom, I went down to Z standard, and I hit enter. Whoops. And remember, this is my negative 10, positive 10, negative 10, positive 10. And we see it down here in my window. Now when we look at our picture, I can see that something's happening way up here on my Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my window. And I'm going to make my Y max really big, like 30. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here and look and see there's nothing happening on my negative X's. So I'm going to change that to be, oh, how about negative 5? And then I'm going to change my X max to 5. And then I'm going to graph it. And let's see what we get. Well, once again, it's way, way up past 30. So we're going to go into my window. And I'm going to make it 50. Let's see what we get this time, and I'm going to graph it. Oh, there it is. Now, this kind of looks how we sketched it, isn't it? We really didn't notice that it went way up here. We could have figured it out if we found our y-intercept. But let's find our maximum point here. So I'm going to do second, calc, go down to max, enter. Now, left bound, I need my cursor to the left of the maximum point. I hit enter. To the right of the maximum point, I hit enter, and enter again. So my maximum point is when x equals negative 0.66, and y is 47. So it's pretty far up there. 
And we already know what our local minimum is. It's right here. How about we find this y-intercept? Well, we know that our y-intercept is when x is 0. So I'm going to hit my trace key. Then you can hit your x key, um, back arrow, and put a 0 in there and hit enter. So when x is 0, y is 40. So when I did my sketch, if I had done my y-intercept, I would have seen that it got way, way, way up there. So let's sketch this graph. I already factored it for you. So let's look at this. I want to know what my end behavior is going to be. So what I could do is foil this out, but I don't need to do that because here is an x to the first, and this will actually be x to the second, and the numbers in front are 1 and 1. So when I multiply that, I get 1x to the third. It's an odd exponent and a positive coefficient. So I know my end behavior is going to go down to the left and up to the right. Now my next step is to figure out where does it cross the x-axis? Well, if I make it equal to 0, x minus 1 times x plus 3 squared, I know it's going to cross the x-axis, or at least touch the x-axis, at x equals 1, x equals negative 3. It has an x-intercept, I should say. So that's what I'm going to draw. So I'm going to put negative 3 about here and put a dot, and I'm going to put 1 about here and put a dot. Because my end behaviors, I know that's going to go down to the left and up to the right. Now there's a cool little thing right here. We talked about it in the last one. This has multiplicity to um, some kind, sometimes called a double root. That means it just touches the x-axis. Sometimes you'll hear it called bumping the x-axis. So actually, it just bumps at x equals negative 3, goes down, and then comes up again. So that's the sketch of this graph. So let's try this one on the calculator. When you go into y equals, I put x minus 1 in parentheses, then x plus 3 in parentheses to the second power. Now I'm going to make sure my window is in standard, which is z standard, so I hit enter. And look at that. Our picture looked almost exactly like that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to go into my window, and I'm going to change my x minimum to, let's say, negative 5, and my x max to 5, and let's see how that looks. That gives us a really good picture, doesn't it? Well, I'm curious what this minimum is. So I'm going to go into second, calc, go to minimum, and hit enter. Now I want to go to the left side of where the minimum is and hit enter. And then the right side, that's your left bound and your right bound. And then I hit enter, and then enter again. So that's where my minimum is at, at negative one-third, and y is negative nine. Now I'm curious, where does it cross the y-axis? If I had tried that, um, in the equation, I would have had a better picture. So what I like to do is simply go into trace, hit my variable key, back arrow, and put zero. Because your y-intercept is where x is zero. And when I hit enter, I see that it's at negative nine. So if I had graphed that with our, when we were um, sketching it, it would have been a little bit better graph.